Just a couple of times today when they got ahead, they couldn't go over the hump. It came up behind him like a librarian. The old strip of ground. That velvety voice was the soundtrack of Aussie weekends since the beginning of the AFL. Down comes Luke Beveridge. It's time for a Beveridge. But Australia's greatest broadcaster was once destined, not for the commentary box, but the footy field. I was a commentator in those days with Frank Sparrow. I remember often saying, I like this bloke because he plays in front. Team player? Yeah, yeah, well that's playing in front. As West Perth's full forward, Kometi showed flashes of brilliance that were, at times, well, centimetre perfect. I think he kicked 60 odd goals in the season that I can remember as a young bloke. He was probably 19 or 20 at that stage and that's a good performance. He looked set to continue improving until the moment his life changed forever. My life certainly would have been different, I think, at least in the short term. It happened at Leaderville Oval in March 1969. Suddenly a policeman walked onto the ground in the midst of training. It's pre-season, we haven't played a game yet, but he came across and said, uh, your father has passed away. 19-year-old Dennis went with the officer to identify his dad's body at Royal Perth Hospital. I remember driving up Hill Street. He always used to park in roughly the same spot and his car was there. And until that moment, I think, it doesn't really hit you that it has happened. The outwardly healthy Jim Cometti had suffered a heart attack. He was 53 years old. He just collapsed in the street after work, heading for that car on Hill Street. And, uh, yeah, he was dead before he hit the ground, I think. Jim had always been his son's biggest fan. Without his old man in the grandstand, Dennis went in a different direction. As I drifted away from football. Had he stayed alive, I think I would have continued strongly with football. Of course, he drifted into another great love, radio. But his experience has led him to step up as an ambassador for cardiac research in WA. Where too many people have been scarred by this. I mean, it may be some years away yet, but we've got to work diligently to try and get it right as quickly as we can. We've come a long way since Jim's death in 1969, but heart disease is still Australia's number one killer. And it's not just a male problem, three times as many women will die from heart disease than cancer. Seemingly healthy people are dying in the prime of their lives. We don't want anyone to have to go through what Dennis Kometi suffered when his dad died suddenly and totally unexpectedly at the age of 19. Dennis is speaking out ahead of the opening of the Perkins Institute's new state-of-the-art cardiovascular disease lab, headed by international specialist Professor Garish Dwivedi, WA's inaugural West Farmers Chair in Cardiology. Professor Dwivedi's uh, sole role in life coming here is to work out how we can better predict whose plaque will rupture before it ruptures so that we can intervene and prevent heart attacks. The professor's medical imaging techniques open the door for groundbreaking heart disease research right here in Perth. In Western Australia, we have not had previously someone with the skills that Professor Davidi brings. Perth's isolation, which is uh, seen as a disadvantage, I think that's a big, big, big advantage for, for people like myself because a lot of my research is uh, collaborative research. The goal, finding out how to prevent heart disease before it leads to a heart attack understanding the mechanisms for why we get heart attacks, why the plaque inside the heart artery might rupture on any particular day. From outside they might look healthy, but inside they may be uh, harbinging a, a serious disease. There's a long way to go. One Australian dies from heart disease every 12 minutes. That's a lot of teenagers losing a parent. But with this huge investment in research and the wider push for healthy lifestyles, it's hoped we can finally stop Australia's biggest killer. I think we've got to get the message out there and not let it happen to 19-year-olds like I was.